Welcome back everyone. Today we're taking a look at the Springfield XDS. This one's the 3.3 version in 9mm. This pistol right here has been out for a while. You guys have actually seen it on the channel for a while because there's a reason for that and the reason that the reviews come in kind of late is because I've been debating adding this or replacing my shield if you will into my carry cycle. So I've been testing it out, shooting a good bit of rounds through it, wanting to ensure function. So far so good, 100% with anything we've put through it. So. What we're going to do here is keep putting some rounds on steel and then step inside, talk about some of the details of the pistol, some of the specs, compare it to a couple other models, and then uh, let's know what I think of it overall at the end. The gun does come with two different mags. It comes with the seven, which is the flush round, uh, seven round, which is flush, I should say, magazine, as well as this nine rounder. This nine rounder, for sure, is more shootable. You can get all your fingers around there, but your... Uh, you're giving up some concealability because as those of us who carry concealed, especially inside the waistband know, um, inside your waistband, what's going to show is going to be the heel of the pistol so or the grip. So you're giving up a little, but it is more shootable. Really just depends on what you want to do and how you plan on using the pistol. So nothing wrong with either. They both function equally great. When you go to pick this gun up at your local FFL, the first thing you're going to notice is that it comes in a nice, hard, lockable box here. When you open it up, you see a bunch of goodies inside. Obviously, you have your uh, gun, your two magazines, nine and seven rounder, as well as a holster here. It's a paddle style holster. Uh, certainly not something that I recommend per se, but if you don't have any holsters at all, it's a good option. Um, on that note, what I've been using so far is this one I have in here from a company called Cubo Tactical. Pretty good little slim Kydex holster, single clip. Uh, work well for appendix or uh, four o'clock carry, which is kind of what I prefer with it. But that's what I've been using because I'm not the biggest fan of this paddle holster here. And you also get your um, mag carriers and your interchangeable back strap. Um, not sure how much of a difference it's gonna make on these relatively small guns, but I did swap it out for the large, uh, for my large hands. Not sure that it's a noticeable difference, but it is an option for those of you guys that like that. For a little pistol, there is a lot of features on there that you typically find on full-size guns. Um, I guess we'll start out here with the frame. You do have nice uh, grip texture on the rear here and the interchangeable piece as well as on the front. So when you're grabbing on there, you are able to get a real good purchase on the gun, even with sweaty hands. Um, you'll know I do wear XL size gloves just for reference and I can get a little bit of my pinky on there. Some of you guys may even be able to get even more on there even with the flush seven rounder there. Uh, the mag release is ambidextrous, nice for you left handers, but the uh, slide lock slide release is not ambidextrous. It does have a grip safety on the back here and just for those of you guys who are unfamiliar with that, um, basically the trigger is dead until you uh, press that in. You will not be able to use it right now. I do have a snap cap loaded in there to show you it also has a loaded chamber indicator which is this piece right here that does stick up when there is a round in the chamber now. We'll take that out of there. See so dumb around. And we'll let it go home and show you how that grip safety works for those unfamiliar. It's just like a 1911 though. So you can pull the trigger and nothing will happen. When you engage that grip safety, pull the trigger, the gun will fire. Now, the importance of that is that you need to make sure when you're drawing from your holster that you get a good grip and a proper presentation there with a the firearm to ensure uh, reliability every time. I would much prefer that that was not there though, however, but in my opinion, a grip safety is better than a regular external thumb safety, but that's just my opinion. Disassembling the pistol is extremely easy. Uh, you just wanna lock the slide of the rear by pressing up here on the slide lock. Inspect the chamber, make sure it's empty. It is. At that point, you're gonna rotate this little little lever here and rotate that up 90 degrees. Let the slide go home, point in a safe direction, pull the trigger, the slide will come right off at that point. You can remove your uh, recoil spring and guide rod, which is uh, steel, by the way, for those of you guys interested in that, your barrel, and that's it. Your gun is steel stripped. Of note, the barrel itself does have the nice melanite coating on there or nitriding, whatever they want to call it. Coating that is also present on the slide, which is a very durable stuff. Corrosion resistance, adds surface hardening, and even a little bit of lubricity to the gun itself. So this one here has been used a good bit. It's starting to get some wear marks, but other than that, it's holding up extremely well. And despite 
whatever kind of finish you have in your gun, it's always going to show wear marks unless you don't use it. So that's really the only way to prevent it. But certain finishes do better than others, and this one certainly is a pretty durable one. And that's all there is to reassembling the pistol as well. This one does come with a fiber optic front sight, and on the rear here we do have two white dots. Both the rear and the front have nice serrations on there to cut down on glare when you're shooting out in sunny days. Um, me personally, I prefer either a blacked out rear sight or just like three dot night sights or something like that. So with this one, I'm going to actually fill this in and make these black and just go with the fiber optic front. But I left them as is for the review so you guys could see what they are. But I personally find that sight picture a little bit distracting with all the colors, but that's just me. Sights are a very personal thing. Some of you guys may actually prefer it like this. Now these guns have been out for a while and I'm sure a lot of you guys out there have actually handled them and shot them, but I'm sure some of you haven't as well. So just in terms of a size comparison, we've got a couple of different guns here. One that it's a big competitor with, which is the uh, Smith & Wesson M&P Shield. You can see how they stack up in terms of size. They're pretty similar all the way around, really not a whole lot of difference at all. Now, one difference was that the uh, M&P here had an external safety, which I really didn't like. However, they've come out with a safety list model of that that I do like. Um, but really pretty similar in terms of uh, size. However, the XD S is going to be uh, a little bit heavier. This one here comes in at 23 ounces unloaded, while the shield comes in at 19 ounces unloaded for the 9mm model. Now, if you're not familiar with either of those guns, we have a Glock 23 here, and uh, very similar, actually exactly similar in terms of size to the 19, for those of you guys that are familiar with that. And you'll see a good bit of size difference there. Longer in the grip, as well as the barrel, but the big difference there is going to be in the slide. Now, as you can see here in the picture, this XDS is under an inch in terms of width there on the slide, and that really does make a difference when you're carrying inside the waistband. Like I mentioned earlier, these guns have been out for a while now, and this is actually the second XDS-9 that I purchased. Uh, I purchased one right when they first came out, and I wasn't 100% on it because I really liked my shield, so I sold it. And then actually after the recall came out, and incidentally, if you guys are unsure if you have a gun that's affected by the recoil, you can take a look at the um, mag safety there and see if it has the uh, roll pin, then you're good. If it doesn't have the roll pin, then it's, it's still subject to recall. Anyway, back on topic. After the recall came out, a friend of mine had one of these, and it came back. He didn't like the trigger on it because it did get a little bit heavier after the recall modifications were made and uh, offered it to me, so I got it at a good price, and I've been shooting it a bunch, as you guys have seen here in this video, and uh, in other videos here on the channel, and honestly, it's kind of grown on me a good bit, so right now, I like it. Like I said, it's been 100% reliable, and it is going to be added to my carry uh, rotation, so that's about as high a praise as I can give any gun, so if you guys have any questions about this gun, or any other guns I review here on the channel, you can always post below in the comments section. You can also post over at my Facebook page, as always, but thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.